Hello, TOC Town. This is Lady Nick. We're in the studio again with another Chief Artisan. Hey there, this is Kisha Coleman, Kish Knows Incorporated, and the Do It Series products and services. All right, we are so glad to have her in the studio because we've had a lot of small business owners talk about how they wanted to self publish and write their own book and uh, my thing is, I have to experience small business owners before I even interview them. And Kish has a series that I definitely went through. It's an amazing series. you got to purchase it uh, if you're con even considering uh, self-publishing. But before we go into all that, let's introduce Kish to the community and see what she's all about personally. Go ahead. Well... Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be here uh, today on the show. And I know it's going to be power packed and empowering for you. And uh, as we've already stated, I am Kisha Coleman with Kish Knows Incorporated. And uh, I specialize in helping people press past the frustrations, the uncertainties, um, the procrastination, the overwhelm that they may be experiencing with regards to uh, their life in areas of leadership, as well as uh, for those who are looking to publish. I am a certified master life and leadership coach. I am a pastor by profession. I'm ordained and licensed pastor. And so my whole thing is about doing it, making it happen, pressing past the excuses. Everyone has an excuse and getting the job done, getting results. And so, of course, I have a publishing series that I have. I've had experience in that area. I've helped many people publish successful, quality, attractive books. But I also am uh, that coach that will coach you through those various aspects of your business and some components of your life as well. But it's all about getting results. This is why I'm so thankful that I do this podcast because I've run into so many people that are um, just packed with information. But let's go into your personal side for a second. You know, where did this all begin? You know, where did this, you know, journey start? Oh, wow. I mean, that's a pretty broad question. We can go back as far as childhood. I mean, I've always been a doer. I remember I would work so hard and try so hard in school. I was always on the honor roll and did very well in school academically. And I do remember even when I had certain subjects that were challenging, my teachers would say she's so efficient and she works so hard. And growing up, I kind of adapted this motto. And that was that I'll always get an A for effort. And so I think I think that's kind of where that doer in me came from. Obviously, I've been raised by some strong uh, uh, women in my life who were doers and so that work ethic has always been there. And uh, I've oft often, uh, I guess, seen a lot of people who uh, have just a lot of excuses in life. And we all do. But I've also observed successful people. And I, I, I've said to myself, well, if they can do it, then why can't the rest of us? And I see what separates successful people from unsuccessful people. And that is the excuses that they're willing to allow in their lives. And so growing up, I've always said that I'm going to do what it takes to be successful. And so that's where the whole doer's mindset has come from and wanting to empower people to let them know, yeah, this may have happened and that may have happened, but we can press past that so that we can get to the side of success that we want to live in. Well, I'm sure a lot of people appreciate what gifts and talents and abilities you've brought to the table. This month, what we're doing is celebrating heart health, you know, not only this month, but this season. And we're saying thank you to a lot of different people who along the path have helped us, assisted us, you know, given us, you know, the backbone to a lot of what we are and what we do today. Who would you have to thank for where you are? Oh, my gosh, there's so many people. I mean, I can start right at home, first of all, with my Medea, my grandmother who raised me and my aunt who assisted her. And then on to my mom, who's always been in my life as well and who's a wonderful woman of God. I mean, these are women that who have just been such a blessing 
to me in my life and the sacrifices that they've made. And then I can go on to school teachers that I remember who were impactful and who believed in me, even oftentimes when I may not have believed in myself. And then I can go on to the ministers and the preachers who've imparted into me and who have mentored me. And so uh, I can go on and on. Um, Currently, some of my mentors uh, on the spiritual side with regards to myself as a pastor, obviously, I have a husband who I uh, have co-founded the church with and who I walk alongside with and pastor. And uh, so obviously, you know, he's an inspiration to me. And then I have the Hilliards out of Texas who are spiritual mentors and we're part of their association. I have the Ashby's out of Kansas City who have known us, both my husband and I, for over 20 years. They're pastors, uh, just people of love. And then we have some people here locally uh, in Indiana, the Shackleford, who are great friends. So I can go on and on. As far as business mentors, I, I have Sean Carroll out of Texas. He was a tremendous uh, business uh, entrepreneur that I met um, a little over a year ago and he specialized in solopreneurs so people small business owners who were just it was just you know one person and uh, working in the business and really uh, coaching small business owners so he helped me really uh, get started on my path of really making some things consistent and focused in my business and then current mentors like Vic Johnson out of Florida who's great with goals and uh, he's a multimillionaire, just a great guy. And um, oh, I got a list. Michael Hyatt out of, <laughs> Michael Hyatt out of Tennessee. Uh, Amy Porterfield out of California. Jeff Walker out of Colorado. Uh, hey, John Maxwell. Now, that's, that's not like a personal mentor, but his books and his lectures, I get in on them when I can. And even my emails from Tyler Perry, shucks, he motivates and he inspires me. So I have people who I really invest in their programs financially and uh, I'm connected with them on a weekly basis. And then I have people who I glean from them through their books and their resources. So, I mean, life is a mentor. People I meet every day, uh, I'm learning lessons all the time. I'm always observing. So, you know, it's just like a sponge. <laughs> I know, right? And I was just like, man, she's already given us homework before we even start the second session. But this is what happens when you get to powerhouses together to talk about the things that they've been blessed with you know and one thing that we do emphasize in our community is being motivated you know not just on Monday because you know and we also ask countercultural you know questions but one thing I do maybe want to highlight for our listeners is that you know we all experience setbacks you know so what has gotten you through maybe one or a few of your setbacks and what would you advise you know other small business owners to do as a result of your experience one thing that I've learned and again a study in successful people is that we all have failure in our life and successful people fail more often than unsuccessful people and it's a bit of a conundrum because we probably think in our mindset I know I used to think that oh they're successful because they have this working for them and they have that working for them and we think about all these wonderful things about the person and that is the reason as to why but the reality is is the successful people know how to take a licking and keep on ticking they fail but they get back up. And so my encouragement to you is not to to take the failure as you don't take it in as, OK, this is me. I'm not successful in my business now because it's me. It's, you know, um, you, failure is feedback. Look at it as feedback. What is it that you can learn from this? I know one of John Maxwell's most recent books is uh, sometimes we win, sometimes we learn. And this is what we have to get to the point in understanding that when something does not go out, go right for us in our business, allow it to be a learning experience. Allow it to be a stepping stone and know that you didn't get it this time, but next time you can get it because you've learned the lesson. Now you grow and you go higher. And so if we just keep that winning attitude that I'm not going to give up and that, hey, 
Look at how many times it took Thomas Edison to finally get that light bulb idea to work. I mean, how many times did he fail? Over 10,000 or something like that. Look at all these wonderful, successful people that were benefiting from their gifts and the value that they've added because they did not give up. One more question before we take a break for the next session. An unlimited time, unlimited place to travel as a certified travel agent i have to ask where would you go what would you do and what do you feel will be your purpose uh for traveling somewhere mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh unlimited time and oh my gosh oh well, if the it, world were your oyster <laughs> oh right now right now in this moment my answer is going to be pretty vain and that would be hawaii number one i want to stay within the u.s <laughs> <laughs> right now and number two I want a wonderful vacation where I'm not dealing with third world issues and problems and I can still be in paradise so it would absolutely be Hawaii for me because I need a vacation more than I take it so uh, that's where I would go and it would be for me to relax and rejuvenate and come back and serve the world Ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us for our per first part of the session for Chief Artist and We'll be back with part two, and we're going to be discussing more of her uh, publishing uh, adventures and also some of the material that she uh, helps us study through and produce our own products. So stay tuned for part two. It'll be right up.